Akusiksalik National Park is a national park in Nunavut, Canada. It covers 20,885 square kilometers, 8,064 square miles of tundra and coastal mudflats south of the Arctic Circle and the hamlet of Repulse Bay, from Hudson Bay's Rose Welcome Sound towards the western Barrenlands and the source of Brown River. The park surrounds Wager Bay, a 100 kilometers, 62 miles long inlet on the Hudson Bay. Although the smallest of Nunavut's four national parks, it is the sixth largest in Canada. Its name relates to steatite found there. Akusiksalik means, where there is material for the stone pot, from akusik, meaning pot or saucepan like kulik. In addition to a reversing waterfall and over 500 archaeological sites, including an old Hudson's Bay Company HBC trading post, the region is home to such species as polar bears, grizzly bears, arctic wolf, caribou, seals and peregrine falcons. Vegetation in the park is typical low tundra, with dwarf birch, willow and mountain avens. Scattered patches of boreal forest can be encountered in river valleys. The park is uninhabited now, but the Inuit lived there from 11th century to the 1960s. Remains of fox traps, tent rings, and food caches have been discovered in the area. The Hudson's Bay Company had an operating trading post in the area from 1925 to 1947. The park was created on August 23, 2003, becoming Canada's 41st national park, and the fourth in Nunavut. It can be reached from the nearest communities of Baker Lake or Repulse Bay by plane or boat. History Little is known about Wager Bay's early history, as until the 19th century the area was inhabited by Inuit who traditionally passed down their history by word of mouth. There is, however, a remarkable quantity of stone relics, mainly tent rings from Thule people, Inuksut, caches and shelters which provide evidence that the coast of Wager Bay has been inhabited for thousands of years. About 500 archaeological sites have been identified in recent years as well from Dorset culture 500 BC to 1000 AD, as from Thule culture 1000 to 1800 and the last two centuries. Barrenland Inuit or Caribou Inuit were not a homogeneous tribe, but families of quite diverse groups. Akusiksalingmiat from Back River and Hayes River regions. Ivalingmiat from Repulse Bay region. Karnermiat from Baker Lake and Chesterfield Inlet regions. Netsilik Inuit Natsilingmiat Inuktitut doesn't have E and O from around Kugarik and Talayok. First Europeans In 1742, Christopher Middleton on his sailing ship Furnace was the first European to enter the fjord, which he could not leave for several weeks because of ice flow. He named the bay after Sir Charles Wager, first lord of the British Admiralty, and an inlet where he anchored Douglas Harbour after James and Henry Douglas, sponsors of his expedition. The Savage Islands nearby he named after Savage Eskimos. Wild Eskimos he met there. Middleton was not successful in his search for the Northwest Passage, and neither was William Moore with his sloop Discovery five years later. As the region was too remote and thought to be useless, the bay was not again recorded or visited for more than a century. In the 1860s, American explorer Charles Francis Hall's two-masted ship Monticello reached Rose Welcome Sound in 1864 while searching for John Franklin's lost Northwest Passage expedition of 1845 and had to overwinter at the mouth of Wager Bay. In 1879, another American expedition led by Lieutenant Frederick Schwatka searching for John Franklin passed nearby Wager Bay by land. The region eventually became recognized when the fur trade started there at the end of 19th century. <inaudible> Early 20th century At the beginning of the 20th century, the Canadian government showed an interest in the Wager Bay region and sent geologist Albert Peter Lowe on Neptune in order to establish Canada's sovereignty over the Arctic North. At nearly the same time, in 1900, the American whaler George G. Cleveland, working alone, established a whaling station near the entrance of the bay, that operated for the next four years. Despite his closure of the station, Scottish whalers for some time tried their luck to hunt marine mammals in the wager area. 
Large iron harpoon heads and other remnants are still found on the Savage Islands. In 1910, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police RNWMP, precursor of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police set up a police post at Wager Bay Coast, near Savage Islands. A police boat wreck, in a small inlet on the southeast shore of Wager Bay is testimony to the brief presence of police there. In 1915, George Cleveland set up a temporary—and the region's first—trading post, near the mouth of Wager Bay. In 1919, Cleveland, now working for the HBC, again set up a trading post in the mouth of Wager Bay. It was transferring building materials for the establishment of the Repulse Bay HBC post. Situated at a favorable location at the northern end of Rose Welcome Sound, this post became important for the company's intention to expand their business towards the north. Alongside these local activities, the Hudson's Bay Company, during the first years of the 20th century, made great effort to get the fur trade under control. They started to build up a large and dense network of posts from the barren lands of northwest Hudson Bay to the northern coast of the continent. According to those plans, a post at the outermost edge of Wager Bay should play a key role. That new post was meant to include the Ukusiksalingmiat area to the Back River Estuary, 250 kilometers (160 miles) to the northwest, into the company's strategy, thereby, if ever possible, preventing commercial activities of competitors, Rivian Frères, operating from their Baker Lake base. In the late summer of 1925, the two-masted schooner Fort Chesterfield entered the channel, and, following the advice of local Inuit, found a well-protected inlet in Tuskjujak now Ford Lake, named after J. L. Ford, post manager in 1929, to establish their strategic station. During the first years, things went quite well. Besides offering usual supply goods, the post supported the Inuit in general, and gave, as far as possible, medical assistance. Thus, it became a meeting point that allowed Inuit from distant camps to exchange news as well. In December 1929, 22 Inuit families were counted, 107 persons in total, camping in their igloos nearby. Soon later, fur trade stopped booming. Hudson's Bay Company changed their major post into an outpost in 1933 and entrusted an inuk, wager dick, with its management. He thereby got the chance to start his own business in the fur trade. Wager Dick and his family lived in the post buildings and ran the outpost until 1946. The company was eventually successful with its strategy towards its competitor and bought Rivian Frères in 1936. Catholic missionaries, missionary oblates of Mary Immaculate, who passed by in those years set up a small mission on one of Savage Islands, but never had great success and withdrew, when the activities of Hudson's Bay Company ended by mid-1940s and the Inuit had migrated into communities. Some 30 years later, from 1979 to 1981, Inuit from Rankin Inlet tried to revive their former homeland, but without success. The area is presently unoccupied by people, except for occasional visitors and local Inuit who hunt in the area. Declared a national park on August 23, 2003, Ukusiksalik became Canada's 41st national park. Landscape At Hudson Bay's northwest corner, some 200 kilometers 120 miles northeast of Chesterfield Inlet, near the Capes Fullerton and Kendall, is the entrance of Rose Welcome Sound, which extends northwards between the barren lands of the Kivalik region meaning, border of the land and Southampton Island to Repulse Bay, where there is a settlement of that name, situated at the Arctic Circle. Wager Bay is an inlet of Rose Welcome Sound, pretty much in its geographical center, near Cape Dobbs. Wager Bay is the core of the national park. Its entrance is a rather narrow bottleneck, it is more than 30 kilometers 19 miles long and approximately 4 kilometers 2.5 miles wide at its narrowest spot. The tides rise and fall up to 8 meters 26 feet and currents are extraordinary and cause large accumulations of ice masses during most of the year, often preventing the passage of watercraft. During early summer the rising flood water washes large quantities of drifting ice and icebergs into the bay. These accumulate during ebb tide, close the bottleneck like a cork and may stay for hours or even days. In some places, Wager Bay is more than 250 meters 820 feet deep. The fjord is up to 35 kilometers, 22 miles wide and almost 200 kilometers, 120 miles long, extending northwest into Kivalik barrenlands. 
It reaches latitude 66 degrees, therefore some 40 kilometers 25 miles from the Arctic Circle. Even at its western end, tides are impressive, between Wager Bay and the 2 km .2 miles wide Ford Lake Tustujak in Inuktitut, so-called reversing falls occur. In Canada, only three of those phenomena are known, reversing falls in New Brunswick and Barrier Inlet, Hudson Strait, Nunavut are the others. The strongest ones are in Norway, 30 km 19 miles east of Bodo, Nordland. They are called Saltstroman and considered world's strongest tidal currents. The soil of the area is characteristic of the Canadian Shield. Topic: <inaudible> Climate. The prevailing climate is Arctic maritime, relatively little precipitation, low temperatures, and strong winds. It has North America's highest wind chill and largest snowdrifts. Due to this, the national park is considered to be high Arctic. A remarkable feature is that at the south shore of Wager Bay a steep mountain range, gorged by former glaciers, strongly influences the weather. Due to its proximity to Hudson Bay, drops in temperature and strong fog are normal during summertime, as blizzards are during early autumn. The bay is not completely free of ice before the end of July, although temperatures may range from cool to very warm between May and September. Fauna According to actual zoological research, there are 16 species of mammals in the park. At Wager Bay's south shore is a large polar bear denning area. Therefore, in July and at the beginning of August, polar bears can be observed, from a boat, on floes, on islands or swimming from close up. Caribou and curious arctic ground squirrels come close to Sila Lodge. More rarely seen are the shy lemmings Lemus sibiricus. Due to their camouflage, arctic foxes Alapex lagopus and arctic hares Lepus arcticus are not easily spotted but are most likely seen when fleeing. Other animals seen occasionally include arctic wolves Canis lupus arctos, muskoxen Ovibos moschatus, snowshoe hares Lepus americanus and wolverines Gulo gulo. Several species of marine mammals can be seen in the park's area. Ringed seals Foca hispida, and bearded seals Aranithus barbatus, live there in large numbers, and from time to time a walrus Odobinus rosmaris, common seal, harbor seal Foca vitulina, a beluga Delphinapteris lucas, a narwhal Monodon monoceros, or a bowhead whale Balina mysticetus, may appear in Wager Bay. Only four species of fish have been reported, Arctic char Salvalinus alpinus, lake trout Salvalinus namecush, lumpfish Cyclopterus lumpus, and ninespine stickleback Pungishus pungishus. Birders are able to observe up to 40 species, including Birds of prey Falconiforms Golden eagle Aquila chrysidos Gyrefalcon Falco rusticolus, bird of the Northwest Territories Peregrine falcon Falco peregrinus Rough-legged hawk, Buteolagopus. Waterfowl. Common eider, Somateria mollissima. King eider, Somateria spectabilis. Old squaw, Clangula hyemalis. Northern pintail, Anas acuta. Canada goose, Branta canadensis. Snow goose, Chen carulescens. Brant goose, Branta bernicla. Common loon, Gavia amur. Yellow-billed loon, Gavia adam c. Pacific loon, Gavia pacifica. Red-throated loon, Gavia stellata. Glaucus gull, Larus hyperboreus. Ivory gull, Pagophila ebernia. Long-tailed jaeger, Stercorarius longicaudus. Herring gull, Larus argentatus. Thayer's gull, Larus thayeri. Black guillemot, Cephas grill. Arctic tern, Sterna paradisea. Tundra swan, Cygnus columbianus. Other ground nesting birds: Sanderling, Calidris alba; Baird sandpiper, Calidris bairdi; Pectoral sandpiper, Calidris melanotos; Semipalmated sandpiper, Calidris pacilla; White rumped sandpiper, Calidris fuchsicaulis; Semipalmated plover, Caradrius semipalmatus; American golden plover, Pluvialis dominica; Snow bunting, Plectrophenax nivalis. Lapland longspur, Calcareous laponicus. 
Common raven, Corvus corax. Rock ptarmigan, Lagopus muta, bird of Nunavut. Willow ptarmigan, Lagopus lagopus. Sandhill crane, Grus canadensis. Horn lark, Eremophila alpestris. Snowy owl, Bubo scandiacus. Water pipit, Antus spinelleta. Topic: Flora. On the one hand, the national park is a typical rocky tundra area, on the other hand, beneath algae, bryophyte and Lacanorallus lichens grows a flora of 25 families of flowering plants. They are closely related to alpine flora, but different. The following families and species are found Birch family Dwarf birch nana, American dwarf birch Bladderwort family Common butterwort Pinguicula vulgaris. Bluebell family, Campanulaceae, Bluebell, Campanula uniflora. Borage family, Borageinaceae, C. lungwort, Mertensia maritima. Buckwheat family, Polygonaceae, Alpine bistort, Polygonum viviparum, Mountain sorrel, Oxyria digena. Buttercup family, Ranunculaceae, Birdfoot buttercup, Ranunculus pedatifidus, Pygmy buttercup, Ranunculus pygmaeus. Club mosses, Lycopodiaceae, Mountain club moss, Huperzia salago. Daisy family, Asteraceae, Alpine daisy, Arnica alpina, Arctic daisy, Dendranthema arcticum, Lacerate dandelion, Taraxacum lacerum, Mastodon flower, Senecio congestus, Pussy toes, Antonaria ssp, Seashore chamomile, Matricaria ambigua, Wormwood, Artemisia borealis. Diapensia family, Diapensiaceae, Diapensia, Diapensia laponica. Ferns, Polypodiaceae, Fragrant shield fern, Dryopteris fragrans. Figwort family, Scrophularia ca, Arctic lousewort, Pedicularis arctica, Hairy lousewort, Pedicularis hirsuta, Labrador lousewort, Pedicularis labradorica, Laplan lousewort, Pedicularis laponica, Sudeten lousewort, Pedicularis sudetica. Grasses, Poaceae or Graminiae, Alpine fescue, Festuca brachyphila, Bluegrass, Poa alpina, Reed bentgrass, Calamagrostis laponica, Sea lime grass, Lamus arenarius, Spike tricetum, Tricetum spicatum, Wild barley, Hordium jubatum. Heath family, Ericaceae, Arctic bell heather, Cassiope tetragonal, Black bearberry, Arctostaphylos alpina, Bog bilberry, Vaccinium uliginosum, Labrador tea, Rhododendron subarcticum, Bog rosemary, Andromeda polyfolia, Crowberry, Impetrum nigrum, Lapland rose bay, Rhododendron laponicum, Large flowered wintergreen, Pyrola grandiflora, Mountain cranberry, Vaccinium vitis idaea. Horsetail family, Equisetaceae, Horsetail, Equisetum arvens. Ledwort family, Plumbaginaceae, Thrift, Armeria maritime. Lily family, Milanthiaceae, False bog asphodel, Tophildia pacilla. Mustard family, Brassicaceae or Cruciferae, Arctic bladderpod, Lescarella arctica. Pea family, Fabaceae, Faboidae, Alpine milk vetch, Astragalus alpinus, Arctic oxytrope, Oxytropus arctica, Blue oxytrope, Oxytropus arctobia, Licorice root, Eskimo potato, Hedysarum alpinum, Sweet vetch, Hedysarum mackenziae, Yellow oxytrope, Oxytropus madeliana. Pink family, Caryophyllaceae, Arctic bladder campion, Melandrium affine, Knotted pearlwort, Sagina nodosa, Moss campion, Salina collis, Mouse ear chickweed, Cerastium alpinum, Purple bladder campion, Melandrium apetulum, Sea beach sandwort, Honkenia peploides, Star chickweed, Stellaria longipes. Poppy family, Papaveraceae, Arctic poppy, Papaver radicatum. Rose family, Rosaceae, Cinquefoil, Potentilla or Silverweed, Potentilla anserina or Argentina anserina, Cloudberry, Rubus chamomorus, Mountain Avens, Dryas octopetala, Flower of the Northwest Territories, Snow Cinquefoil, Potentilla nivea. Saxifrage family, Saxifragaceae, Saxifrage, Bulblet saxifrage, Saxifraga cernua, Golden saxifrage, Chrysosplenium, Grass of Parnassus, Parnassia, Prickly saxifrage, Saxifraga tricuspidata, Purple saxifrage, Saxifraga oppositifolia, Flower of Nunavut. Sedges, Cyperaceae, Arctic cotton, Eriophorum schoichzeri, Cotton grass, Eriophorum vaginatum, Sedge, Carex ssp. Plantain family, Plantagenaceae, C. hippurus or Hippuridaceae, common mare's tail, Hippurus vulgaris. 
Willow family, Salicaceae, Salix, Arctic willow, Salix arctica, plainleaf willow, Salix planifolia, least willow, Salix herbacea, net-leaved willow, Salix reticulata, trailing willow, Salix arctophylla. Willow herb family, Onagraceae, fireweed, Epilobium angustifolium, flower of Yukon. Wintergreen family, Pyrolaceae. Topic: Tourism. Usually, the park can only be visited during a very few summer weeks, from the beginning of July until the beginning of August. Before that, Wager Bay has too much ice to be visited by boat, and in the autumn the Inuit say, "...during summertime, you may watch polar bears. Afterwards, they will watch you." The place can be reached by a hired plane, usually one would depart from Baker Lake, about 350 kilometers 220 miles away, where scheduled flights arrive from Rankin Inlet. One can also approach by motorboat from Repulse Bay, where Parks Canada runs a station, but due to possible problems with ice this might take longer and therefore will only be considered by explorers or movie teams who have to bring a lot of equipment. The only air strip in the park is at the Sila River on Wager Bay's north coast. In 1987, Inuit from the area built Sila Lodge at this location. The lodge was opened for a few weeks during the summertime to allow nature enthusiasts to stay in the area. Due to the high expenses of the flights, the lodge has been little used since 2002. From Sila Lodge, guided tours were offered, for instance boating tours to the Wager Bay Islands, or to Ford Lake across the Reversing Falls, to the former Hudson's Bay Company outpost, or walks to the surrounding area, where one would find impressive relics of earlier settlements, such as tent rings, Carmack and Inukshuk. The site can be used as a starting point for backpacking trips, but with suitable precautions taken for polar bears in the area. Topic. Trekking routes The following valleys, waterfalls and lakes can be reached by walking from the Sila Lodge area. First lowest waterfall of Sila River, total, 4 km miles, time to walk, 1 hour, total time, 1.5 hours, height difference, 40 m peak, 4 m difficulty, easy, Traversing Tinnituktuk Flats, total, 6 km 3.7 miles, time to walk, 1.5 hours, total time, 5 hours, height difference, 80 m 260 feet, peak, 30 m 98 feet, difficulty, easy. To Ships Cove, total, 10 km 6.2 miles, time to walk, 2.5 hours, total time, 4 hours, height difference, 50 m 160 feet, peak, 30 m 98 feet, difficulty, easy medium. Second waterfall of Sila River, total, 8 km 5.0 miles, time to walk, 2.5 hours, total time, 5 hours, height difference, 160 m 520 feet, peak, 110 m 360 feet, difficulty, medium. Third and fourth waterfall of Sila River and Falcon Gorge, total, 8 km 5.0 miles, time to walk, 2.5 hours, total time, 5 hours, height difference, 416 m 1,365 feet, peak, 110 m 360 feet, difficulty, medium difficult. Fisherman's Hike, total, 10 km 6.2 miles, time to walk, 3 hours, total time, 5 hours, height difference, 200 m 660 feet, peak, 150 m 490 feet, difficulty, medium difficult. To Butterfly Lake, total, 16 km 9. 9 miles, time to walk, 5 hours, total time, 8 hours, height difference, 400 meters 1,300 feet, peak, 250 meters 820 feet, difficulty, very difficult. Topic. Photo gallery Topic. Books Nunavut Handbook, Akaluit 2004 ISBN 0 9736754 Wach, Ansgar, Der Polarbar Kam Spat Abends, Schizen von der Wager Bay, Pendragon Verlag Bielefeld, 2002 ISBN 3 934872 22 0 German The Polar Bear Came Late at Night, Sketches of Wager Bay, there is no English edition of the book.
Topic. See also. List of protected areas of Nunavut.